Rebirth of the Malicious Empress of Military Lineage, Chapter 185, Shielding One Shortcoming Su Ming Feng followed the big bearded guard in and along the way, the servants of the residents of Prince Ru I all looked at him with critical gazes, making Su Ming Feng feel uncomfortable all around. But thinking about it, there was no turning back on this matter, since he had already offended Prince Ru I, if it was not true. He could just return with a big apology. No matter what, Prince Ru I had to give some face to officials' family since this was the territory of Ming Chi. Now Su Ming Feng started to be apprehensive again. Prince Ru I did not even put Emperor Wen Hu in his eyes, so how would he put a lowly young master of the Su family in his eyes? Moreover, the Su family was no longer in official dim, so to Emperor Wen Hu. The residents of the Count of Ping Nan had no value at all thus if something really happened, Emperor Wen Hua would not offend Prince Ru Ai because of them. It was fortunate that there was a second young master, Su Ming Lang, in the Su family. If something really happened to him, there would still be descendants in the Su family. But if Prince Ru Ai took his anger out on the Su family, how would the entire residence end up in? On the way Su Ming Feng let his imagination run wild and his back gradually broke into cold sweat that he was not aware where the big bearded guard had brought him to until when the big bearded reminded, Gentlemen Su, you have arrived. Su Ming Feng then quickly recovered to his senses. This was the inner courtyard of the residence of Prince Ru Ai and there was a pond in the courtyard. In the winter night the wind that blew from the pond to oneself was really very cold. There was a lantern that was hang from the tree branch that allows one to see that there was a stone table in the garden. Two people were sitting in front of the stone table, seemingly a male and female, looking rather realistic. Su Ming Feng looked at the bearded man unconsciously and the bearded man said, His Highness is waiting in front. This one will withdraw first. Finishing, he did not wait for Su Ming Feng's reply and turned around to leave. Su Ming Feng looked at that big bearded man's back and was thinking that the guards of the residence of Prince Ru I were so arrogant. It was no wonder then Prince Ru I had that kind of conduct. What kind of master would have what kind of servants as subordinates would follow the example of their superiors? Prince Ru I was not respectful to Emperor Wen Hu. The guards of the residence of Prince Ru I were not respectful to guests. Thinking about it, the only unbridled person in Ding Capital was only the previous little Marquis of the residence of the Marquis of Linen. Upon walking nearer, one only then discovered that there was a white furry animal that was crouching under the table. At the beginning when Su Ming Feng saw its shape, he had thought that it was just a cat but when that cat-like thing heard his movements, it turned its head over and cried, revealing its white sharp teeth. It was actually a tiger. Su Ming Feng thought that even though it was a small tiger, the residents of Prince Ru I actually raise a tiger in their house. This Prince Ru I was indeed very unique, as he thought. He felt that Prince Ru Ai and Zi Jing Xing were not very similar. As Su Ming Feng walked to the front of the stone table, Prince Ru Ai's back was facing him thus Su Ming Feng saw the female that was sitting first. That female's brows were clear and appearance was graceful and dignified. As the familiar eyes looked over, Su Ming Feng called out hoarsely, Young Lady Shen. It turned out to be Shen Miao. Young Lady Shen, why are you here? Su Ming Feng could not help but asked. Young Master Su is managing really to wide. The indifferent voice sounded and there seemed to be a slight annoyance in it. This prince's wang is in one's own residence, what is wrong with it? One's own residence almost made Shen Miao unable to continue to drink. He smiled and nodded towards Su Ming Feng. Gentlemen Su. Su Ming Feng's gaze landed on Prince Ru Ai's back that was facing him. He did it lazily but his posture was unexpectedly tall. With the faint light of the lantern, one was able to see the smooth lines of the gold threads that lined his collar. Your Highness Prince Ru Ai. Su Ming Feng said. Prince Ru Ai did not speak. Su Ming Feng collected himself. As Shen Miao was here. He was no longer afraid, thinking that he had almost forgotten that Shen Miao was currently considered to be Prince Ru Ai's consort. It seemed that Shen Miao's and Prince Ru Ai's relationship was also not bad thus if Prince Ru Ai had any intention to kill him, Shen Miao would not sit back and ignore it based on Zi Jing Xing's extent. Even though it was somewhat strange to have such a thought, Su Ming Feng gathered his courage and asked, 
Ming Feng's visit today is about a matter to ask, speak. The simpler Prince Rui spoke, the more Su Ming Feng felt distressed, he spoke. Your Highness Prince Rui is very similar to one of Ming Feng's old fire and but that old friend had been missing for many years. Ming Feng is to be so bold as to. His heart shook, Ming Feng is to be so bold as to request your Highness to take of the mask and let Ming Feng resolve the doubt in one's heart. After saying these words, Su Ming Feng lowered his head and waiting apprehensively for the other party's answer. After some silence, some sound was heard even though it was like usual somewhat faint, as if it was Carla's voice but each word weighed more than a thousand jin, one jin equals 0.5 kilograms, in Su Ming Feng's ears. Prince Ru I asked, the old friend that you spoke of, is he called Zi Jing Xing? Su Ming Feng's heart moved and there seemed to be a rush of ecstasy that burst out of it but in a blink of an eye he forced himself to calm down. Prince Ru I had stayed in Ming Chi for a few months and Zi Jing Xing's reputation here was not small and was considered a heroic figure in Ming Chi. Since he was Zi Jing Xing childhood friends, perhaps someone had said this matter to Prince Ru I. He said, exactly so, Zi Jing Xing is dead. One was unable to hear any anger or joy in Prince Rui's voice, you said he had disappeared. The world had said that he died in the battlefield with Northern Zhang and I have personally seen the corpse. Su Ming Feng laughed bitterly, but I am unwilling to believe it. Now with your highness's appearance, even though Su Ming Feng knows that this condition was very unreasonable, but there are some things in this world that one have to do one's best to accomplish. Su Ming Feng has nothing to hide towards Prince Rui. From Prince Rui's looks, Su Ming Feng felt that he was not one that will pester endlessly and was somewhat reasonable. Perhaps he would feel something in these words and would be particularly broad minded to it. The white tiger on the floor whimpered as Prince Rui stood up from the stone bench. He turned around and the mask gave out a cool dark glow in the wind. Su Ming Feng only then discovered that Prince Rui was half a head taller than him when he stood up. Zi Jing Xing was also taller than him by half a head. At that time, that youth was hard bent on comparing heights and because Su Ming Feng was half a head shorter, he had plead with Su Furen to give him half bowl of rice more every day, hoping he could exceed Zi Jing Xing. At that time Zi Jing Xing said rather despicably, you want to become a second Su Ming Lang? As time passed, it seemed that everything was not changed but the blue sea had turned into mulberry fields and it was a thing of the past. Xin Miao was about to speak when Prince Rui said, you want to look at this prince's face. Su Ming Feng nodded his head. Prince Rui reached his hands out to the mask that was covering his face and took it off slowly. The curved eyebrows, tender peach blossoms eyes, bravely shaped nose and lips that had the lazy smile, just like yesterday. There was a slight change in appearance that made that beautiful but mischievous youth become this familiar sinister and handsome young man in front of him. But it was still him. Zi Jing Xing Rin said somewhat despising, see until one becomes a fool. Su Ming Feng felt his eyes suddenly became somewhat sour and he stepped forward before hitting Zi Jing Xing's shoulder with his fist, just like they did normally. He scolded, brat, keep on deceiving everyone and even me. Really don't have any sense of brotherhood. Xin Miao could not hide the astonishment she felt in her heart. She did not think that Zi Jing Xing would remove his mask that easily in front of Su Ming Feng and admit to his identity. Just like how he did in front of Princess Rong Xin. Even if they were good friends or family, when one saw the sudden identity change, there might not necessarily be forgiveness. The more precious the relationship was, the more one should not put it to test because the results of it would not be something that one could handle. For oneself, it was a profound torture that would never be obliterated. If it was Shen Miao herself, perhaps she would not be that outright. After all she dared not and do not have the courage to accept an unknown result. This point was something that she would always be inferior to Zi Jing Xing. He was very clear about what he wanted or did not want and even forces himself to a situation that he would not have any chance to hesitate at all. You, how did you becoming Prince Rui? Su Ming Feng patted his chest. Just now I was still thinking that if Prince Rui had the intention to kill me, I can only die here today. He said, 
now one's life is saved. There was an unstoppable excitement in his voice. Zi Jingxing stared at him, you have gotten stupider after not seeing for two years. Su Ming Feng waved his hands. I know that you are not dead. A bad person will live a thousand years. For a person like you, you will live eight thousand years. He then sighed, if it was not for Princess Rongxing who looked for me that day and me seeing young Lady Shen's tiger head bracelet, one feared that one would be kept in the dark. Did you plan not to see me? He said in anger and sulky that he was not trusted. Zi Jingxing shrugged his shoulders. Exactly so. Su Ming Feng was furious but in the past he was often bullied by Zi Jingxing so he was not angry at this moment and was only somewhat doubtful. It seemed that young Lady Shen has long knew of your identity. He laughed and looked at Shen Miao, speaking meaningfully. At the beginning I had felt that something was fishy. Now it seemed that you have gotten what you have wished. You really hid it well. Shen Miao. What are you trying to say? Zi Jingxing spoke impatiently, you're Sao Zi, aka sister-in-law, and me still have things to talk about. Shen Miao and Su Ming Feng were shocked by the word Sao Zi at the same time. Su Ming Feng took a look at Shen Miao, since you are still alive, why did you not say a word to me for these two years? Moreover it seemed that Princess Rong Zin is doubtful of your identity. Why did you not take the initiative to speak to her? And your father, Su Ming Feng. Zi Jingxing interrupted his words, I am Prince Ru I of Great Liang. The courtyard became silent. A slight sigh appeared in Shen Miao's heart. One had to take this step at the end. Zi Jingxing's identity was destined for him not to have anyone standing by his side in Ding Capital. No matter who was it, when they knew of Zi Jingxing's true identity, they would always think of treason. No matter if it was the truth or a predicament, no one cared. They only cared about the result and deception. Princess Rongxing doted Zi Jingxing like a real son but at the end could not avoid the thought of guarding against him and deception. Naturally Su Ming Feng would be ecstatic in the short period upon seeing his old friend alive but at the end he would still walk to the moment of truth. That was the most exposed, cruelest and painful time for a person. Su Ming Feng looked at Zi Jingxing and asked in puzzled. What are you talking about? Yes, you are now Prince Ruai. Was it that something happened in the Northern Zhang battlefield that you had no choice but to use an interim stratagem? The identity of Prince Ruai is indeed noble and it is not a good idea to have it for long. You have to. I am Prince Ruai of Great Liang. Zi Jingxing said. The long-winded voice stopped abruptly. The wind swirl up the leaves in the courtyard and the white tiger had already huddled back to its shack where it was set up. In the night where there was no moon or stars, only the lanterns emitted a faint light. Su Ming Feng's gaze was double and he asked hesitatingly, What is the meaning of this? My true identity is Prince Ruai of Great Liang, not the son of the Marquis of Linen, Zi Ding. Zi Jingxing said faintly. It is not an interim stratagem. This is not possible. Su Ming Feng blurted out, We have known each other for more than 10 years and spent our youth together. Why do I not know? The heir of the Z family died upon birth. The real heir of the residence of the Marquis of Linen is already dead. Zi Jingxing said, It is not me. Su Ming Feng looked at Zi Jingxing in a daze, as his words were somewhat confusing and he was also unclear about some matters, he asked. You meant that from the beginning you are not the son of the Marquis of Linen and someone substituted a raccoon for the crown prince and brought you in. You grew up in Din capital but you are not a Mingji citizen. You are Great Liang's citizen and the younger blood brother of Emperor Yongle of Great Liang. How could this be possible? This is just impossible. When he was talking, he saw clearly Zi Jingxing's expression and he suddenly stopped. On that familiar and handsome face. There was only the expression of indifference. Su Ming Feng understood Zi Jingxing. When Zi Jingxing was talking about serious matters, he did not like to repeat and when he was impatient, it would often be this expression. What he said was the truth. Su Ming Feng could not tell what his heart was feeling at this moment, as if it was blocked by a mass of cotton. Just now he felt the joy of seeing one's old friend was gone and what remained was impitiness and some inexplicable anger. He asked, when did you know about your identity? From when one remembered things. Zi Jingxing replied. Su Ming Feng took two steps back. When one remembered things. 
He asked, You have long knew that you are from Great Liang. Zi Jing Xing did not express an opinion. Xin Miao lamented in her heart. Why did Zi Jing Xing need to be this honest? In fact, the more he said so, the more Su Ming Feng would feel deceived and sometimes it would be easier to him and acceptable for other when he said some lies. However Shen Miao asked herself, if it was her, one feared that she would also be as honest as Zi Jing Xing. There was really no need to deceive the people one was closest to. Sure enough, as Shen Miao expected, after Su Ming Feng heard Zi Jing Xing's reply, his expression became extremely complicated. After the surprise, horror and suspicion, there was a deeply betrayed expression on his face. He coldly laughed and asked, Oh? Then why are you back now? Could it be that you are unable to take that Ming Chi is better than your great Liang or you have ambitious intentions to step your phone here? His words were harsh that even Shen Miao could not help but cast a side long glance. However she knew in her heart that from an outsider point of view, which was the clearest, for Su Ming Feng to know this much secrets, he would not be able to accept it and it was very easy to hurt the people that were closest to them. So what of it? Zi Jing Xing said in a low anger and not only did he not smooth in Su Ming Feng's ruffled feathers, he actually calmly admitted it. Xin Miao wanted to speak but after thinking about it, she gave out. It was not gentlemanly to speak when watching a chess game so she would take it as though one was watching a show today. Indeed Su Ming Feng got even angrier. He yelled at Zi Jing Xing, I finally know what a rebellious thief is, and what a white-eyed wolf he is. I thought that you are not close to the Marquis of Linen, since young, because of Princess Yu King's matter but now it seems that you clearly knew that you were not related to them as the son of the Marquis of Linen but enjoyed everything that the residents of the Marquis of Linen had to offer, that even the two Shu sons of the residents of Linen was not as good as you. You kept on saying that Princess Rongzin is your family but you deceived her and make her suffer in pain upon your news of death. You treated me as your brother but concealed your identity for so many years. One feared that there was a reason to have a good relationship with me. You don't like Ming Chi and Ding Capital but that it after all the place that raised you. Birth is not as significant as raising one up. You have enjoyed everything that Ming Chi gave you but because still took drastic measures and be your prince through I of Great Liang. Your Great Liang is a rich nation with strong people and even has a strong military. You have abandoned everything in Ming Chi for wealth. Zi Jing Xing, you have no feelings or sense of justice, not worthily to be one's D son and do not deserve to be a brother even more. Go back to your Great Liang. Enough. Xin Miao stood up and interrupted Su Ming Feng's words. Su Ming Feng's words were just too hurtful. She turned to look at Zi Jing Xing and won the face that was no longer covered with a mask. Zi Jing Xing's expression was unobstructed. There was no anger, smile but his expression was bland as he looked at Su Ming Feng calmly. It was as if the person that Su Ming Feng was speaking about was not him and as if he did not care about what Su Ming Feng said. Suddenly in Shen Miao's heart, there were a few waves. She looked towards Su Ming Feng but there was a mocking smile on her face. Oh? Gentleman Su looked devoted to righteousness that inspires reverence and could not wait to come over and uphold justice. Unfortunately the white-eyed wolf that you call others, to me, you are also one. Zi Jing Xing was stunned. Su Ming Feng became angry with Shen Miao too. What did you say? You are a white-eyed wolf. When Shen Miao was fighting with my Furan in the inner palace in her past lifetime, naturally she would had to be involved in war of words every day. When it came to mocking people, even though it was not outstanding, she had learned a lot of things from my Furan. She smiled gently and looked dignified and composed. The more she was like it, the more Su Ming Feng's rudeness was brought out. Her voice was soft and gentle, like drizzling rain. But each word and sentence were merciless. Before pointing the blame to other, it at best to first take a look at oneself. Gentleman Su thinks that Prince Ruai is a white-eyed wolf and felt that Prince Ruai had made use of you. I would like to ask Gentleman Su that in the residence of the Count of Ping Nan, from Yang, how much did Zi Jing Xing help you? From you entered officialdom, you did not know how to socialize. It was Zi Jing Xing who forked out money to arrange matters. When you wanted to learn martial arts, 
It was Zi Jingxing who helped you to seek a master. When the emperor wanted to suppress the residence of the Count of Ping Nan, it was he who was by your side reminding you and persuaded the Count of Ping Nan to quickly retreat from the torrent. If this was not the case, do you think that there is still a residence of the Count of Ping Nan in today's Ming Chi? One fear that the grass on the gravestone would be Wan Zhang. Wan Zhang equals 10 feet equals 3.3 meters. Hi. You spoke of Zi Jingxing making use of you, using your relationship to plot against the entire Ding capital but when one mention of Su Ming Feng, who would not know that you are Zi Jingxing's childhood friend. From young, your health was weak but there was no one who dared to bully you. Do you think that it was based on the reputation of your residence of the Count of Ping Nan or because you have a close childhood friend in Ding capital that no one dared to provoke? The matters of the world is just this simple. Gentlemen Su might fight that the words I speak are not nice to listen but since childhood, how many roads had Zi Jingxing help you to lay? How much help was given to your Su family? If this is the so-called making use then I also help that someone would make use of me. Gentleman Su, do you not say that? She had a smiling expression but the words said were like raindrops drumming ceaselessly on the banana leaves and each answer had a slight chill to it, gotten the benefits from others but turning around and giving a slap before saying and blaming others. If this is not a white-eyed wolf then what is? Gentleman Su, can I also not say that you do not have no feelings or sense of justice and is not worthy to be brothers? To blame the person for giving you your current enjoyments, is it shameful or not? Su Ming Feng was not one who knew how to fight a battle of words with females and moreover Shen Miao's words were all of ridicule but the truth that it made his complexion turn to purple red. In extreme anger and with Shen Miao's words, a roll of pictures floated up in his mind. In all fairness, Zi Jingxing treated him indeed very good. If it was not good, Su Ming Feng would not had thought about it for so many years. Zi Jingxing was arrogant, rude, unruly and did whatever he wanted to do, as if nothing could restrain him. Even though he said he was without feelings, but with regards to Su Ming Feng's matters, he would always help. For example, when someone bullied Su Ming Feng when he was young, Zi Jingxing did not say another word and beat the other person up. Even if the person was a child of the imperial family, there was no hesitation in the beating until the people around finally dared not bully Su Ming Feng. It was just that even though Zi Jingxing did so much, he would never come to claim merits or even mentioning it and often had a bad attitude towards it. As time passed, people would remember his bad points and his good points was gradually forgotten. After Shen Miao said all of that, her heart was extremely carefree. She did not know why but when she saw Su Ming Feng accusing Zi Jingxing, she felt the scene was very piercing to her eyes. Now that she had finished speaking, even though she was somewhat blushing, she did not regret it. Shen Miao thought that there was definitely no such thing of Zi Jingxing having thoughts of making use of Su Ming Feng. Otherwise in the past lifetime when the Su family was sentenced by Emperor Wen Hua for the entire clan to be beheaded, no one collected the corpse of Su Yu and sons. Everyone was afraid of Emperor Wen Hua's anger and suspicion but only Zi Jingxing stood up and buried them. The Zi Jingxing at that time was already burdened with the death of Zi Ding in battle and the residence of the Marquis of Linen was in jeopardy. He himself also used his life to lead into a dangerous battle. Fu Ming's evaluation of Zi Jingxing was loyal to brothers being a true hero and follow his heart. A child's eyes would see the realest of things. Shen Miao had thought that Fu Ming's words were just the case. She however did not realize when she was speaking, after Zi Jingxing was slightly surprised, his gaze fell onto her and there were was a delighted expression. Su Ming Feng looked at Zi Jingxing and did not speak. His feelings were complicated and sad. His good friend was not dead and still alive and this was something that could make one happy. However one did not know why but currently he was not happy at all. Zi Jingxing glanced at him. I do not owe you all anything. If one were to calculate the debt, one had long paid back. Zi Jingxing said. The residence of the Marquis of Linen is a tall tree that attracts the wind, thus the Emperor had the intention to suppress it. There are tens of thousands of soldiers in the Z family army under the Marquis of Linen. If there was love between father and son, coupled with the son continuing the father's mantle, 
The emperor would not be able to sleep peacefully. The nearer one walk, the faster one dies. I still want to live a few more years. So one protect the Marquis residence first for the Marquis of Linen. The gratitude for parenting has been exchanged for a safety of the Marquis residence. Is it not worth it? Zi Jingxing raised his lips and asked. Su Ming Feng was speechless at the questioning. If I do not do that then Zi Ding, who was originally a Sorai of the Emperor, would one day die and the residents of the Marquis of Linen would be charged with an unwarranted charge and would fall. Even though now the sons had died and there was no descendants, at least the residence of the Marquis of Linen was still around and the Emperor let go of the Marquis of Linen. When one mentioned about the residence of the Marquis of Linen, it is still a clean and clear family. Zi Jingxing smiled mockingly, one have the mother and son sentiment with Princess Yu King by name and because of this little relations, what one could do is to preserve the dignity of the Marquis and residents of the Marquis of Linen. Xin Mia looked at Zi Jingxing's handsome profile. He said it carelessly, as if all these things were not important at all but in all those years, all those unspoken words were only placed in his heart. Zi Jingxing was a candid person but he was the least honest person. He candidly stated the genuine facts and truthful process but he was dishonest to his own heart. He did not mention the grievances he had suffered or the worries that he carried. In everyone's eyes, he played with life and trifled without respect, as if nothing in the world could stump him. However when he was arranging all these matters, in order to preserve the clean name of the Marquis residence, he was forced to bear the reputation of rebellious, impudent and no regards for one's elders. Su Ming Feng was dumbfounded when he heard it. Being in Great Liang is not as simple as being noble and wealthy like you think. He looked at the icicle on the tree and said heedlessly, if it was you, you would have cried and returned to look for your mother in a day. Su Ming Feng's throat was suck when he heard those words. There are no completely uncalled benefits in the world. Whatever that was gained had to be fought for. Su Ming Feng, your days are comfortable but you cannot look at me with the perspective of comfort. I have experience much more than you had. He sighed softly but there was still a smile on his face. That pair of peach blossoms eyes were slightly curved and the eyelashes were hang in a nice arc. From this angle, his brows were gentle and beautiful like it was a spirit that walked out from a painting but in those pair of eyes, there was no smile at all. It was as cold as winter. Finally he said, the most important point is that there is no nurturing but only expungement from Ming Chi to me.